Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe and in this Amigurumi crochet tutorial I'll show you how to crochet these ladybugs. Thank you so much for everyone who voted on my poll. The ladybug actually received the second most votes but I'm starting with this one because I already had this pattern in process and by now it was tested by lovely people who helped me with it and so it's ready to go. Whereas the peacock pattern is still in progress, uh, in process. <laughs> I'm making progress though, so please hang in with me um, while I get that pattern ready for you. So the peacock one and so of course we will also have a peacock tutorial in the near future. So with this tutorial I just want to mention you can find the written pattern in the description box below that's on my website. You can also purchase the PDF version of the pattern for a small fee on Etsy or, or Ravelry. I also link to um, my shops in the description box below and of course there is also a Ribla version, my favorite platform ever, so you can find the links to all of these below. And so let's get into the materials we need for this project. So I used Shippies Katona, which is a um, four ply or fingering weight yarn, but you could just as well use DK yarn. Um, actually, for this round, I'm using DK yarn. Um, it's really almost the same. Um, so, DK or light worsted weight yarn. And so, the colors you'll be needing are red, white and black. For the purpose of this video I'll be using this light brown instead of um, black so that you can actually see what I'm doing. And so you also need a 2.5 millimeter hook. That's something in between a size C2 or B1. So I would go for a C2 if you tend to crochet quite tightly, but um, if you're new to amigurumi or tend to crochet more loosely, I'd recommend a B1 hook. Then you'll also need a yarn needle, scissors of course, a stitch marker and some fiber fill. And then for the wired legs and antenna, you need some craft wire. So this is one millimeter thick craft wire. But um, yeah, the thing is you don't need to use it. You could also crochet the antenna um, and legs. I'll show you how to do that as well. And shout out to Tara who gave me this suggestion when testing the pattern for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> But if you choose to use wire, then you also need some glue. So let's begin with this ladybug with the closed elytra. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. I never actually um, heard it pronounced, <laughs> just saw it written. And so we begin with the bottom here. So you'll need your black yarn. I'll be using brown. And we begin by making a loop. And then we'll chain four. One, two, three, four. So now we'll single crochet in the next two chains, starting in the second chain here. And in this last chain here, we'll make four single crochet. So we go through this one here 
and make four single crochet in the same spot one two three and four so now we crochet in the other side of the chains and so we'll make one single crochet in here that's one and then we crochet in the other side of this first chain here that we began with and there we make three single crochet it's three so all together including the first one we now have four single crochet in there as well so this is our first little round now I'll be placing a stitch marker in the last stitch now in round two we begin with an increase in the first stitch so two single crochet in there then we single crochet one in the next stitch and now we have four increases in a row so two single crochet in each of the next four stitches. That's one increase. Two. Three. and four so now we have one single crochet in the next stitch and then we finish the round with three increases one increase second increase And a third increase and the last stitch. So that's round two done. Now we have 18 stitches in the round. In round three, we begin with one single crochet and then an increase in the next stitch. Then we have two single crochet and an increase in the next stitch and one single crochet one increase one single crochet one increase one single crochet one increase and then again two single crochet one and two then we have an increase in the next stitch one single crochet in the next one increase in the next one single crochet in the next and one increase in the last stitch by the way feel free to mute the video if you don't um, like hearing me talk that's what these um, 
instructions above are for, so feel free to do that if you prefer a silent video. Um, my commentary is just for those who prefer listening instead of looking at the screen for the instructions. So this way you have both options. So now our round has 26 stitches and in round four we begin with two single crochet. That's one and two. Then we have an increase in the next stitch. Then we have three single crochet in a row. One, two, three, and now an increase in the next stitch. Then two single crochet. Oh, this one should go in the next one and an increase in the next. And now we repeat this two more times. Two single crochet and an increase in the third stitch. And again, two single crochet and an increase in the third stitch. Now we have three single crochet in a row. One, two, three, and an increase in the next stitch. Then two single crochet. And an increase in the next stitch. And once more, two single crochet. And one increase in the last stitch. So now the round has 34 stitches. We'll finish this round with a slip stitch in the next stitch. And now this slip stitch is the last stitch of the round. So we just shifted the, the end of the round one stitch forward. So this is where now our stitch marker goes, although we actually won't need it now we'll join the red yarn. So we join the red yarn simply by pulling a red loop through this loop and you can tie both these ends together if you like. The black yarn can now be cut off. And so in the next round we'll crochet in the back loops only. So we start with nine single crochet only in the back loops. So we just go in here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. 
So that's how it looks so far. Now we chain six and we'll skip six, six stitches and then we'll single crochet in the remaining 19 stitches. So six chains, two, three, four, five, six, and then we skip six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, and in the seventh goes the next single crochet, again in the back loop only. That's it. So this opening should be on this side of our work and it should be centered. So if it's more toward the left or the right, you can adjust where this opening goes. So maybe you need one single crochet more. Maybe you need 10 single crochet in order to get it centered or maybe you only need eight. Um, but yeah, I think for most of you, it should work out this way. And so now we just single crochet in the remaining back loops. And the last one goes in the back loop of the slip stitch that we made here. That's it. So our round still has 34 stitches. In round seven, we crochet in the complete stitches again. So we start again with nine single crochet. And here we'll single crochet in the back loops of the chains. We will need the front loops of the chains later to crochet the pronotum out of, if I pronounce that correctly. So in the back loop of the chain goes one single crochet and we'll do this with all six chains. It doesn't really matter if you catch two loops or just one. Just want to make sure that I don't split the yarn. As long as there is one loop left that can be crocheted in, it's fine. So that's the six single crochet done. And now we just single crochet in the remaining 19 stitches. That's round seven done. Now in round eight, we begin with seven single crochet. It 
six and seven and now we have a decrease so we'll go in the front loop of the next stitch pull our hook down to go in the front loop of the next stitch so we have three loops on our hook now pick up the yarn and pull it through the two front loops so now we have two loops remaining on our hook and we pick up the yarn and pull it through these two loops. So that's the decrease done. Now we make six single crochet. And then we have another decrease so going in the front loop here and the front loop of the next stitch picking up the yarn and pulling it through and picking up the yarn and pulling it through the two remaining loops so now we repeat all of this so again we have seven single crochet That's seven, so now we have a decrease. And six single crochet. And we finish the round with a decrease. So that's round eight done. Now our round has 30 stitches and in round nine we'll simply single crochet in all 30 stitches. So I'll just let you go ahead with that. You can pause the video here and hit play once you've completed this round of 30 single crochet. Round nine is done now and so in round 10 we single crochet three. And then we make a decrease. And now we repeat this five more times, six times in total. So you can pause the video again and hit play once you completed round 10. Round 10 is complete now and our round has 24 stitches. Now in round 11 we start with one single crochet and then we make a decrease. Then we single crochet two. And make another decrease and we repeat this four more times the two single crochet and the decrease then we have two single crochet again and a decrease and again two single crochet and a decrease and once more two single crochet and a decrease And then we make one single crochet in the last stitch. So here we can secure our stitch because now 
is a good time to add some fiber fill. We still have this opening here through which we can fill, so don't worry about filling it all the way up. Filling it a little bit will just be helpful in crushing the last two rounds. Um, at least that's what I find. At least the, the last round, closing the last round is easier this way, in my opinion. So it's done already. Now in round 12, um, we now have 18 stitches. So now in round 12, we start with one single crochet and then we make a decrease. And we repeat this five more times, six times all together, alternating between a single crochet and a decrease. And it's two done. three, it's four, five, and one more time, one single crochet. and one decrease. So now our round is down to 12 stitches and so in round 13 we'll make six decreases in a row. So I find that it helps to squeeze um, the work together when doing this last round. Let's see, let me do that again because I think I split, might have split the yarn there. No, that was actually all right. So there's two decreases. Three decreases. Four, five, and six. So now our round should have six stitches. That's right. So here we can fasten off. And now we need our yarn needle to close the round. So now we just go through the front loops of each stitch. I'm not pulling the yarn in tight just yet. First I go through all six front loops. This is the last one. So now I pull tight. Be careful if you're using acrylic yarn or wool because that might um, tear 
more easily than cotton. And now we go through the center of this last round here. And then we just weave in the yarn end. So this one we can also pull nice and tight to even out the top here. And now we can weave in this yarn end. So for this I just like to follow the single crochet pattern and go in different directions to weave it in securely. And then we can cut it short. So that's the body done. So next we'll crochet the pronotum. And for that we'll be using the black yarn. So I'm using brown here. And we join the black yarn right here in this gap right to the first uh, skipped, st skipped stitch here. So I'll just go through there. And then I put a loop through here. So now I just want to take that yarn and so that I can hold it in place. And that's it. I'm just holding it in place with the hand that's holding the work. And so now we start with six single crochet in these six skipped stitches here. So we'll just go through here and make one single crochet in each two, three, four. five and six. So now we have our first six single crochet. Now we turn our work and the next single crochet goes here in this gap to the left of the skipped stitches. So that's the one that's mirroring this gap where we just joined the yarn. So we'll just go in here and make a single crochet. Now we go through this gap here that's to the right of these chains that we made. So in this next gap here between the red stitches, that's where we'll make another single crochet out of. So now we have eight all together and then we turn our work again. And here we now have these six chains that we made and we left the front loops open so that we can now crochet in them. And so the next six single crochet go in the front loops of this, these six chains. So just going through the open loops, that's one, this is the next one two, three, four, five, and six. So now we're at 14 stitches, only two more to go. So we turn I work again to make our last two single crochets. So the next one goes in here, kind of in this side of this 
first red round. And we make a single crochet there. It doesn't matter all that much um, which loop you pick up there as long as you make a single crochet in this side of this round as we did on the other side. And now the next single crochet goes in this first gap where we first joined the yarn. And that's where we'll make our last single crochet. So now round one is done and our round has 14 single crochet. So we can place our stitch marker here to mark the end of our round. So in round two, we simply single crochet in all 16 stitches. So feel free to pause the video here. I'll just leave you to it and you can hit play once you've made the 16 single crochet. Round two is now done and we can actually hide this yarn end inside. And we can already start adding more fiber fill. We can still add more after the next round though. I think that's enough. We don't want to add too much because we want the bottom side to remain flat. And so now in round three, we make two single crochet. And then we make a decrease. And we repeat this three more times, four times all together. Two single crochet. And a decrease. Two single crochet and a decrease and once more two single crochet and finish the round with a decrease. There we go. And so that's round three done. So now we can add more fiber fill if necessary. I think I'll add just a little bit more. This should be more than enough. And so now our round has 12 stitches and so we finished the round by making six decreases again. It's one, two, three. 
3 4 Five, and six. And so now, when we fasten off, I just removed some fiber fill that I worked into my stitches there. So now we fasten off, leaving a long yarn end. So this is... Mm, 30 centimeters, 12 inches, that should be more than enough. And so now we need our yarn needle again. And as we did before, we go through the back loops of all six stitches. First, I just loosely pull the yarn in through all six front loops. And then we can pull it tight. Once again, remember not to pull too tight if you're using acrylic or any kind of wool easily breaks. So now we go through the center of this last round and we want our needle to exit here on top of the ladybug in between the um, elytra, elytra and pronotum because this is going to divide the two elytra. And so We pull it through here. And give it a little tug. Don't worry too much about how this side looks because um, the little head is gonna go on there later on. Now we just want to make sure that we divide the two elytra equally. So just have a look at where you now place this stitch. So this looks like it would be in the center, aligned with this center here. Let's see how that looks. That looks good. So you can pull it, not too tight, but enough so that there isn't any gap. That's looking good. And then we can weave in the yarn end here on the bottom side. Next, we'll crochet the spots and the tiny head of the ladybug. And so for this, we'll also use black yarn. I'm using brown. And so we begin with a magic ring. Just use your preferred magic ring method. If you want to learn this one, I have a tutorial for that. I'll link it here. And so we make six single crochet in the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
and then we close the magic ring. Now we fasten off already, leaving a long enough yarn and to later sew the spot on for the head. Like 20 centimeters should be more than enough. Pull that through. And now we need our yarn needle again to turn this into a proper circle. And so to do that, we'll just cheat another little stitch in here in between the last and first stitch. So we'll go through the first stitch here. And then we'll go through the back loop of the last stitch where the yarn is coming out from. And so now it kind of looks like as if there was another stitch and the whole thing looks more like a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. So that's the first spot done. And now you can repeat this seven more times so that you'll have seven spots and one of these circles to use for the head. So now that we have all these spots, we just need to take one and set it aside. That will be the head, which we'll sew on later. But for now, we'll sew on the spots. And so the first one is that spot. I um, can't remember the proper name. There's one spot spot that goes right here close to the pronotum so I'll just pin that in place and yeah actually we can start sewing that one on before pinning the rest in place and so we need our yarn needle again. And now we try to sew the spot on as invisibly as possible, if that makes sense. So we'll just go through the body. Maybe I'll just pick up a loop here, one of these brown loops. And then I'll go through the next closest stitch of this circle. And then I go through the next stitch from the top down. And now I find a loop on the body that's close to it. And I'm going backwards again just to firmly secure it. And now I go through these two stitches again. And the next one. So now I find a, another stitch on the body and this time I'm moving forward. Going anti-clockwise here, doesn't really matter which way. And now I go through the next closest stitch from the bottom up. And then through the next stitch from the top down. And again, find a stitch that's close to it. I think in this case, it's not necessary to go backward.
and then I go through the next closest stitch of the circle. I think we can remove the pin now. And through the next stitch. Now here I'm going to move backwards again to properly secure it. Depends, like if there's a, this creates a long gap here without any stitches. And I like to go backwards too. Make sure it's attached firmly. And again, go through the next closest stitch. And through the next stitch. And now we're almost all the way around. Try to catch this one here. And now the spot is actually sewn on. So this time I'm using a different technique to hide the yarn ends. I just go through the body all the way to this opening here because this is nice and big. And I'll also thread the other yarn end. do the same with this one so we want them both to exit in the same opening here and now we can make a double knot and we can cut these yarn ends a bit shorter like this and now we can actually pull them in with the hook. So I'm just entering the hook um, somewhere with the maybe two centimeter distance. And then we can pull these two yarn ends and the knot to the inside of the ladybug. And just move around until the yarn ends are hidden. This way we don't have to weave in so many yarn ends with all the spots. Um, yeah, I think that would just be too much. So this is how I'm doing it um, in this case. And so now we have our remaining six spots. And so you can decide where you'd like to put them. And yeah, that's what makes your ladybug unique. So free to be creative with it. It doesn't have to be in the same spots that I choose. And then you just sew them on the same way you did with this one. So now all the spots are sewn on and the next step is embroidering the white markings here. And so for that we'll be using our white yarn around 50 centimeters or 20 inches and we also need our yarn needle and so we start the embroidery in between the pronotum and the um, elytron and so the um, lower edge of the marking will be aligned with this border here between the belly and the elytron. And so I'm making a stitch like this across two rounds here, round, well, what is it actually? Um, round two and three, right, so. Mm 
and leaving a long enough end on this side here. And now I repeat this stitch three more times. So that goes in the exact same spot. One, two, and three. And so now I'm moving up like one stitch. So the next opening, next closest opening, I just go through there and then I stitch through the same spot in the front here. I only change the spot on the outside. And here I make again three stitches. I mean two, uh, for now, that's the second one. And with the third stitch, I go and stitch through to the other side so that I can start the embroidery on the other side. So I'm just going through the same spot that we started this side on. That's it, that's this side done. And now here again, we stitch across round two and three towards the center. You can have a look to make sure it's more or less symmetrical. For me, it looks a bit Maybe I need to go a bit further. I'm not sure. I'll, I can correct it after making the first stitch if it's too short. So that's one. Yeah, I might go a bit further and make one more like this. two and now with the third stitch I go a bit further just to even it out I mean you can you know improvise a bit depending on how it looks for you I can just see that this needs to go further toward the center here now with the third stitch I again go one stitch higher on the outside outer side of the marking so this is the third one. So now from here I can add three more stitches. And this spot in the center stays the same. Going with this more centered spot now. So that was one, now two. And with the third one, I'm gonna stitch through somewhere on the belly where we can hide the yarn ends. Okay, so now we can go ahead and hide the other or bring the other yarn end to the same spot. and hide the two yarn ends and the knot inside. There we go. Uh, 
Okay, so now we can go ahead and sew the tiny head on. So we place this in the center front here. Pinning it in place. And now I'm using the longer yarn and this one here to sew it on the same way we sewed on the spots. The head is sewn on now. And so all that's left to do for this ladybug are the legs and antenna. And for this one, I will use wire for the legs and antenna. I'll also show you how to crochet the legs and antenna. If you want to jump straight to that section of the video, please open the description box below and click on the timestamps for crocheted legs and antenna. If you make this ladybug for little ones, I um, highly recommend crocheting the legs instead. Otherwise, um, feel free to use whichever option you prefer. And so this is one millimeter thick craft wire and we need one seven centimeter long piece. So that's like two, three quarter inches. This type of wire can usually easily be cut with household scissors. You don't need um, this kind of tool. And then we need one piece that's six centimeter long or like almost two and a half inches. Then we need one five centimeter long piece, about two inches. And for the antenna, we need a three centimeter long piece, one and a quarter inch. So these three longer pieces will be the legs. The longest one will be the um, hind legs. And so if we look at our ladybug from the bottom, and you'll notice these three larger gaps. And so the center one you can see as the middle and then the hind legs, the longest pair of legs, they um, should go behind this middle line. And we want them to enter somewhere here and then round two and one. should be the in-between space of the legs. And so I'm using my yarn needle first just to make some open up the stitches a bit in the gaps so that the wire can go through more easily. And that's it. If any yarn ends come out during this process, try to push them back in. And so now we try to have both wire ends at the same length and then you can slightly fold them up. So now we're going to wrap them with yarn. And so we need our glue for that and our black yarn. So now we start with one side and apply a bit of glue on the whole wire. So we let that dry a little bit. So in the meantime, we can cut our piece of yarn. This is 40 centimeters or 
16 inches long and now you can find more or less the middle of the yarn and that's what we start wrapping with so it doesn't really matter which direction to wrap in um, sometimes if you wrap in a certain direction the yarn will unravel a bit um, if you know what I mean so just be aware of that other than that you can just wrap in any direction and just try to cover the leg So I'm leaving half a centimeter or so space at the end of the wire piece and this part we're folding over. For this step it's quite handy to have flat pliers like these. They are gonna get glue on them so make sure that you don't mind that before ruining your jewelry pliers or something like that and this should secure the yarn so we can let it dry first and then cut off the end just to avoid getting glue on our scissors as well. And so now we can do the other side. So we bring the other side of the yarn through to the other leg. And now we apply glue to the other side of the wire and let it dry for 30 seconds or so. And then we wrap this leg as well. Again, mm, let's do it this way, leaving about half a centimeter at the end of the wire and folding that over. And almost stuck my fingers to the other side. So maybe wait for this one to dry before you do that one. <laughs> And now we let it dry again. And then we can cut the excess yarn off. And now we'll take the second longest piece of wire. And so this one goes, first I'll show you with my yarn needle. This one goes somewhere around um, where this gap of these three gap, the, um, the one in the front where that is. And again, we leave round one and two as a space in between the legs. And so this is kind of where I want them to go. Mm, no, this looks better. So going through with my yarn needle again 
and then with a piece of yarn uh, with, with a piece of wire and that's it and so now we repeat the steps for sticking the yarn to the wire with this pair of legs now we'll attach the third pair of legs so we we'll use the five centimeter two inch long piece of wire for that and this front pair of legs goes about two rounds above the middle pair of legs so somewhere here with about four stitches space in between Trying to push the fiber fill back in. <laughs> and so now we repeat the same process for this pair of legs. And let the glue dry before we make the antenna. Now all the legs are attached and so only the antenna remains. We'll shape the legs in just a little bit. Let's first do the antenna. And so the antenna goes through the head. From one side to the other. So let's see if I can loosen it up enough. To get the wire through. Yes. So that's the antenna. And now we'll also wrap the antenna with yarn. And so for this we only need a short piece like 20 centimeter or eight inches and the process is the same as with the legs we apply some glue let it dry for a bit find the center of the yarn And start wrapping. And then bending over the end of the wire. And then we bring the other piece of yarn. To the other side. And then we apply some glue to that side and again bend over the tip of the wire
and then we let this dry and cut the yarn in short and then all that's left to do is shape the legs so now that everything's dry we can go ahead and shape the legs and so you can just kind of find the middle of the leg and bend it this way and then bend the tip of the leg which will be the little foot outward and repeat this on the other side and do the same with all three pairs of legs If you have pliers, you can use them. So now one last step that you can take, you can just leave them flexible like this, or if you want them to remain in a certain position, you can put a drop of glue on the base of each leg so that they stay in the desired position. I'll just leave mine flexible like this. And so that's the first ladybug done. So now let's do the second one with the open wings and open elytra. So let me show you how to make that one. So for this I'll be using blue instead of black. I don't have that much brown left so I'm not sure if it will be enough. And so the first part you can actually go back to the beginning of the video. I link to this timestamp below in the description box. And so you can go ahead and crochet round one, two, four of the body and then we'll continue crocheting from round five. Round five is a little bit different and the rest is exactly the same. So I meet you at round five of the body. So now I'm at the end of round four and the only two differences between this open wing ladybug and the closed wing ladybug are that we don't change color here and we don't make a slip stitch in the next stitch. So we go straight into round five and the end of the round, the last stitch of the round remains here in the second single crochet of the last increase that we made. And so we single crochet in the back loops for this round as we did for the other ladybug. The only difference is that we now add a 10. We start with 10 single crochet instead of nine because we don't make the slip stitch that shifts everything one stitch forward. And so we work in the back loops only. And if you had to adjust the number of stitches that you made for the other ladybug if you made it in order to have the opening in the center front then if you remember how many stitches you made you can most likely just add one more stitch to it and then you have the correct number nine ten if you don't remember or you didn't make the other la ladybug um, you can just count six stitches here uh, once you made 10 single crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if they are more or less in the center front, then you are good to go ahead and make six chains. And then skip the next six stitches. And then we continue crocheting in the back loops only 
single crochet in all remaining stitches so if you made 10 single crochet if you started the round with 10 single crochet like i did then you'll have 18 stitches remaining in the round and from here you just continue the pattern as instructed for the first the closed winged ladybug so you can go back to the beginning of the video a link to round six of the body below in the description box and then we can you can pause the video and once you've crocheted the body you can crochet the pronotum the same way you did for the closed wing ladybug so the timestamp for that is also linked in the description box below and once you've done that you can go ahead and embroider the white markings and you can crochet eight circles for the spots and for the head you can sew on the head and once you've done all of these things you can come back to this spot here in the video i'll timestamp everything below to make it easier for you and then we'll crochet these open elytra and the wings together so once you're at this stage so the body is done the pronotum is done the white marking markings and the head we can go ahead and crochet the open elytra together and for that we need our red yarn and we begin with a magic ring So just use your preferred magic ring method and in round one we start with six single crochet in the magic ring. So now before closing the magic ring, we can actually place a stitch marker in the first stitch and this will prevent it from becoming too tight to crochet in. One of you lovely people gave me this tip once. I'm sorry, I can't remember who, but I'm very thankful for it. So now we can close the magic ring. and remove the stitch marker and in round two we have six increases one two Three, four, five, and six. That's round two done. Now in round three, we make one single crochet and increase in the next stitch and we repeat this five more times six times in total so that we'll have a stitch count of 18 once the round is done In round four, we single crochet two. 
and increase in every third stitch. And we repeat this five more times so that we have a stitch count of 24 once the round is complete. In round five, we single crochet in the next three stitches. And increase in every fourth stitch. And once again, we repeat this five more times, six, time in to six times in total, so that we'll have a stitch count of 30 once the round is complete. And in round six, we'll start with four single crochet. and increase in every fifth stitch so that we'll have a stitch count of 36 once the round is done. In round seven and eight, we will crochet in all 36 stitches that our round now has. So once again, you can pause the video and hit play once you completed the next two rounds of 36 single crochet. Round seven and eight are done now. And so now don't fasten off. Instead, secure the last stitch with a stitch marker. Before we continue with the Elutron, we will so the spots on it and so for now we'll need three spots so three of the circles you crocheted and so let's start with the right elutron so for this one we want to place the um, spots on the right side of it so if you imagine that this end of the round, this stitch marker is going to be the tip of the elutron. So this is going to be the tip here. And then this is going to be the base here. And so we want the three spots to be on the right side of it for the right elutron. The left side will be the inside here. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'll start with one spot to show you how I sew it on. This time we can do it a bit differently than we did with the other ladybug. Or actually let's start with the yarn and that comes out of the magic ring. You can use that one to kind of roughly put it in place. So close to the center maybe for this first one here. Let's see how that works out. Yeah, maybe like this. So now we thread the other yarn end on our needle and I'll just hold the spot in place while sewing. That should be fine. So with this part of the pattern, we can actually sew it on by going through the whole thing to the other side. And then finding the next closest gap, going back up again. And then we can go through the next stitch of the circle from the bottom up. Once in a while, check and make sure 
that it's in the spot you want it to be. Then we can go through the next stitch of the circle downward and also if you want at the same time go through the red circle and then back up again and just find the next closest stitch of the circle going up then going down through the next stitch going through the red circle and going back up and through the next stitch and I think we're all the way around now yeah so that seems to be firmly attached and just checking that it's in the right place so later when we fold it over it's going to look something like this and so once you're happy with the placement you can tie the two black yarn ends together and cut them short and so now we can repeat this with the other two spots and so I'm going to put one somewhere here and then the other somewhere here I guess so I'll just let you go ahead with that you can pause the video and hit play once you've sewn on the other two spots so now that the spots are sewn on and the yarn ends are cut short and hidden inside our work we can continue finishing the elytron so we continue where we left off so now we're going to fold it in half and crochet the two sides together so we insert our needle our hook sorry in the next stitch as well as the last stitch of the round which is a bit tricky oops let's try that again you can first leave the loop a bit more loose so that it's a little easier to get into the last stitch so now I'm in the first and the last stitch of the round and now I pull the loop nice and tight again and then we pick up the yarn and pull it through and single crochet so that's the tricky part done now we just go through the next stitch and the corresponding stitch on the other side and single crochet and that's what we do with all stitches so we'll have 18 single crochet this way Just going through both stitches and crocheting them together.
and now we have one stitch to go that's it last single crochet so that's the right electron done now we can fasten off we just need to leave a long enough yarn and to sew the electron on and now you can go back to the beginning of this part for the elytra and crochet the left one exactly the same way only when it comes to sewing on the dots that's um, where the left elytra electron um, differs so you can crochet all the eight rounds and then we'll sew on the spots for the left one together now the other electron is done at least the most of the crocheting part and so with this one you want to place the end of the round downward so this marks the tip of the electron the opposite side will be the base of it and so for this one we sew the three spots on the left side of it so if you create an imaginary line that divides this circle into half place the three spots on the left side so just going to pin them in place to show you but then I'm going to remove the pins so that I don't poke myself like this for example so the three spots are on the left side and you can sew them on the same way you did with the other electron and then once the spots are sewn on you can go ahead and crochet both sides together so fold it in half Hide any yarn ends inside. And then we go through. Two corresponding stitches at a time and single crochet them together. Now that our elytra are done, we can set them aside for now and crochet the wings. And so for this, we'll need white yarn and we begin with 20 chains. So we make a little loop and chain 20. And now we make a row of half double crochet. So for this, we begin crocheting in the third chain from our hook. So in this one here, yarn over to half double crochet. And we'll do a full row of half double crochet. So that will be 18 stitches.
that's row one done. 18 half double crochet. Now in row two, we chain one and first we chain one and turn. And row two is different for the right and left wing. So let's begin with the right wing. For the right wing, we slip stitch three. One, two, and three. Then we single crochet three. One, two, three. Now we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch. So yarn over and pull the yarn through the first two loops, yarn over and pull it through the remaining two loops. Now we'll triple crochet three. So we do two yarn overs, go through the next stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through. Now we have four loops on our hook and we pick up the yarn, pull it through the first two, pick it up again, pull it through the next two, pick it up again and pull it through the remaining two. And we have two more of this triple crochet. Then we have a double crochet. Then we chain one, and now we have four triple crochet in a row. So yarn over twice again to make a triple crochet in the next stitch. And three more of these. So that's our four triple crochet done. Now in the next stage we have a double crochet. In the next stage a half double crochet. And we finish this row with a single crochet. And then we can fasten off. And now we just finish off with an invisible finish so we'll skip this stitch here and go through the next stitch i hope you can see this with the white yarn pull that through and then we we go through the back loop of the last stitch that we made And this way we have a quite smooth finish. And then we can go ahead and weave in this yarn end.
So this is the right wing done. Row one for the left wing is exactly the same as we did it for the right wing. So you can go ahead and make 20 chains and then 18 half double crochet, then chain one and turn. And row two is a little different. So for this one here, we start with a single crochet. Then we have a half double crochet. Then a double crochet. Then we have four treble, triple crochet in a row. Then we chain one and double crochet in the next stitch. Then we triple crochet three. Then we double crochet in the next stitch. And chain one. Then we single crochet in the next three stitches. And slip stitch in the last three stitches. And for this wing, we'll actually need the long yarn in here. And so leave it long enough to sew the wing on. So that's it. Now we have our wings and we have our elytra. We have the final spot that goes on last. And we have the ladybug body. So now we can assemble everything. So we start with the wings. And so we want them to be sewn on right. Right behind the pronotum here. So somewhere here. And then we want them to be in an upside down V shape. So you can just start with one wing, pin it in place. And with this one, I forgot to leave a long enough yarn end. But I'll fix it in the edit so that you won't have the same problem. And now we'll just so the wing on similar to what we did when sewing on the spots on the first ladybug although here it's not as important that this seam is 
neat and invisible because the elytron will go on top of it. And so we can go a little bit around the corner here as well to make sure it stays where we want it to be. And that should be enough. Just bringing the yarn in through here so we can hide it later. And now we just repeat this with the other side so this one can slightly overlap at the base. So you can pause the video here and I'll just let you go ahead with that. So now the wings are sewn on. Also, I forgot to weave in the yarn and for the left one, I corrected that. And so now we can go ahead and attach the elytra. And so we want them to partly overlap with the wing. So I'm just going to pin this in place. I think that's looking good. So I'm gonna start with this direction, sewing a bit in this direction and then also here to secure it firmly. So with this one, we want to be more careful to have a nice and neat seam because this is going to be more visible. That should be enough. So now I'm going to go through. We don't need to. We this whole part on mm, going through to here going through to the wing so that we can secure this corner a bit better and sew it on to the wing And then, as we did with the wing, we can just go through here so that later we can hide the yarn ends once we have both of them. And so, that's one elytron done. So now we want to place the other one right next to it. Ideally so that they touch. I might have attached this one a little bit too far on the side, but I can um, sew them both together now. So that's fine. I'm going to show you how. So I'll 
try to attach this one symmetrically and then finish by connecting the two. Best use a second pin for this one as well. Mm -hmm. Going through to this side again. And now we can go ahead and connect the two only here at the base. See how that works. It's looking good. So now we can hide the yarn ends here. So that's looking good. Now we're going to sew on the last spot. And so this one goes right here. on the base of the elytra. So I'll let you go ahead with that. So the last spot is now sewn on and now all that's left to do is crochet the legs and antenna. So if you want to use wire for this instead you can Open the description box and click on the timestamp for the wire leg instructions. If you want to crochet them, stick with me. I've already done one leg to add to my photo tutorial. And so now we'll do the rest. And so this is the front leg. Now the Middle pair of legs goes slightly above this middle point, so two between round two and three, so somewhere here. So this is where I'll attach the yarn. I'm using this light color so that you can see what's happening 
just pulling the yarn through here. And now for this first leg, I made five chains and four slip stitches. For this one, I'm going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then slip stitch in the second chain from the hook and in the remaining chain so that I'll have five slip stitches. Sorry, I can't show this really well because I can't lift up the ladybug at the same time, but I hope you know what's happening here. So now we have our five slip stitches and we can fasten off here. And now all that's left to do is weave in the yarn ends. So that's really easy and straightforward. I have to do this differently because I'm using a different yarn color, but you can just normally weave in the yarn ends to nicely secure the legs. So um, you're using the same color as the body, so that should be no problem for you. Now the hind leg goes somewhere here. I'll just attach it here. Once again, on, on round three. So that it looks like it's going to be between round two and three. And for this one, I'm going to chain seven. And now I'll make six slip stitches, starting in the second chain from the hook. And that's it. And once again, we can fasten off and weave in the yarn ends. So now we can repeat all of this on the other side. So once again, for the first leg, I made five chains, four slip stitches. For the middle one, six chains, five slip stitches. And for the last leg, seven chains and six slip stitches. Now the legs are done and so all that's left are the antenna and we'll make them the same way as the legs. So you can just go and insert the hook in the stitch on the side facing the white marking. and join the black yarn. And here we make three chains and two single crochet. Sorry, two slip stitches. <laughs> That's it already. So we can fasten off and weave in the yarn ends. 
So once again, you can just regularly weave them in. Since you're using the same color as the body. And so these are the little antenna done. And that means your ladybugs are complete. Thank you so much for crocheting along with me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up for me. Comment below. Share this video with anyone who you think might like this project. And if you like, share your finished creation if you have a public Instagram account. And tag me there at Stellas Yarn Universe so that I can give you a thumbs up. And also you'll be automatically entered in my monthly giveaway of a paid pattern from my shop. So thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. And happy crocheting. Bye.